Ada yang pada bingung kalau mengira kalau mengira. Ada yang nalek. Sorry. And uh, I'm very uh, proud of the completion of this project, and which is supported by well, actually, relatively small amount of funding from the Department of Education. But with this relatively uh, small amount of funding, uh, Dr. Destina uh, and Tits, uh, which is uh, I was associate professor Wan Wijaya and the uh, uh, teams from Seattle Chair has done a lot of works, not only for the uh, researcher, the research participants, but also uh, the early childhood educators. I hope some of the participants of the workshops are here attending uh, these presentations. And I think this is how academic life should be. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bestina and Associate Professor Wang Wijaya have initiated research by applying for funding uh, to the Faculty of Education and then they did research involving the early childhood educators in which uh, uh, both of them educate uh, the early childhood educators in uh, special reasoning 
And then the educators use this knowledge to teach early childhood uh, students. Yeah. And then after that, we today we have we have this lunch talk, which is to disseminate what they have done. Yeah, during uh, the research. Yeah. And of course, after this, uh, I think both of them will prepare uh, an article or a book or module for the publication. And that's how academic life should be. Every year, if we can have one research funding, we can uh, do research uh, and community services because educating the childhood, early childhood education is also part of the community service, giving benefit of our knowledge to others and i hope in the future uh, the collaboration between the three uh, institutions which is people iu Deakin university and siamo cheche can be continued maybe <laughs> uh, next year or this year uh, as a professor Mati Vijaya, uh, can initiate for example uh, by apply, applying uh, Australia Research Council events, perhaps uh, that's what we expect, or any other international body of fundings uh, for other topics in relation to math. I think that's all from me, and uh, also see you all in the afternoon for the uh, end of the semester gathering. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the great remark, Prof. Before we start, please allow me to introduce our wonderful speakers, Dr. Destina Wahyu Minati, lecturer of at Indonesia International Islamic University, Faculty of Education, and also Associate Professor Wati Wijaya, lecturer at Deakin University. I'll begin with Dr. Destina first. She's the lecturer of Faculty of Education, and we all know very well that her expertise in spatial mathematics. Uh, several research uh, she has been conducted, both national and international. In her recent research, now she has been collaborated with one of the associate professor from Deakin University, Ibuwati Wijaya PhD. So again, please allow me to read Ibuwati short bio. Wanti Vijaya is an associate professor in mathematics education at Deakin University, Australia. She is the associate head of school for international and engagement of Deakin School of Education. In Wanti research focuses on understanding complexity of classroom practices and examining ways to support teacher professional learning and student mathematics reasoning. Ibuwati, prior to joining Deakin in 2012, Ibuwati worked as a teacher educator in Indonesia, and she spent one year as a visiting academic at National Institute of Education in Singapore from 2011 until 2012. She is an active researcher who has published extensively in teacher professional learning through lesson study, student mathematical reasoning, interdisciplinary stream, and teacher professional noticing. And for additional information, during conducting the research process, Dr. Destina and Ibu uh, and Ibuanti Vijaya PhD has been assisted by our PhD student Razi from Bechua. <coughs> and Shifa. Those are PhD Bechua. In this moment, I would like to also address to all students, particularly the PhD students, the joining research with the lecturers who have similar interests with you. You may initiate first step to meet the lecturers to discuss more and please your uh, time during four-year study to improve your skill and, and experiences in conducting research. Um, I'm not going to talk uh, more. I would give, uh, I would like to give a floor for Dr. Desina and Associate Professor Wanti Vijaya PhD. The floor is yours. Thank you very much to uh, Dr. Chalina. Uh, good morning, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
So happy to be here again. This is, I think, uh, my third lunch talk uh, at the Faculty of Education. So at the beginning, I also share my uh, my PhD research uh, earlier when I joined this uh, this uni, and then uh, last year I think we have we have a project together with pa, uh, pa Lukman, Dr. Lukman. So we are talking about uh, Magang Merdeka. So now I come back to the last talk, sharing uh, our project, working this time working with uh, Associate Professor Wanti Wijaya. And not only two of us, we also uh, take Samuel Sesep team, who are really expert in the field of early childhood education, uh, that really give a great insight for us for the run of this program. Uh, so before I start this, uh, presentation uh, just a little bit of a uh, structure so because I have myself and Dr. Wanti Wijaya and also uh, Samuel Sasakti that was introduced by Dr. Charina earlier then we will take turns so I, I hope you will get mixed up we try our best to make it as smooth as possible but there will be me and then uh, one thing will come and we have a team from Samuel Sasakti as well so all of us will speak and maybe later on at the end Razi or Simpals can add up things because they, they are the one who are behind the screen and help us in the process of the workshop along, I think it's around um, three months together with the implementation at schools. So it's really happy to be able to share with you all, hopefully today uh, with this uh, presentation, with the story that we share, we have Dr. Ramdi as well. and. We have the Samuel Sasak teams. Uh, everyone who participated in this session can get the, the sense of what is this research, can get insight. Maybe you were interested about early childhood or about special reasoning specifically or mathematics also. So we'll see. Uh, I will start by calling my colleagues from Siamis Sasak, Pak uh, Yuan and Rupati, would you mind to also sit next to me? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> okay, so a little bit of a background. Let's let the screen still this one in parts again. So this recent start with the uh, Wanti, me, and Razi things of ideas of a project. So we come up with this uh, with this research project and apply grant to the university uh, to the triple I U. Uh, funding and then we get it from the faculty of education and then we run this uh, this project at the beginning and then we realized that I think um, the, the earlier thing is like people that is more into mathematics mathematics education and we bring the the case or the context of early childhood because we know the significance of that through literature review but then be also aware and realize that we are not the expertise in the field of early childhood. So we thought uh, we had a visit actually before before we had this project. We went to Samuel as an office. We meet all the people there, and we think there is a possibility for doing the collaboration. And here is it. Uh, here it is. We have this project, and we offer it to them, and they are happy to work with us. So then we continue working together with the assistant from the Samuel Sensor things as well. So for this occasion, we're going to share what we have done um, for this project. We call it Promoting Special Reasoning of Early Childhood Educators to Support Numeracy Learning. So uh, for your information, we are focusing in supporting the teachers, but maybe later on in the presentation, you will see how the teachers actually implement this program to their uh, students at their respective center. So it's like, like what uh, the dean of the faculty explained earlier that we, the first hand we go to the teachers itself and then the teachers go to their students and they come back to us and discuss all and then see what is the best practices to share with each other. All right, so next slide. All right, so let me start with the rationale of this project. So there is a growing awareness about uh, the importance of special reasoning 
in the last schooling year. So it's not only uh, in the higher level, but also starting from the early childhood. Uh, they're starting, uh, many research studies start thinking of how important special reasoning is. And then special reasoning is also one of the predictor of numeracy in the later years. So from the study, from the literature review that we conduct, actually uh, there are a number of studies that shows that special reasoning is actually one of the predictor in later uh, numeracy skills. So in other words, I can say that if you train students their special reasoning, their special skill and they improve and their special reasoning skills, it's going to support their ability in numerical skills. And it will be useful in the later years. Maybe later on, I can give the context in more detail how this makes sense that special reasoning actually related with numeracy in specific, or maybe if we give the definition of numeracy this case, that the ability to be able to work with numbers to solve many uh, things in this real world, not really specifically in mathematics. Um, with, with these ideas, then there are numbers of studies also say that when you start teaching the kids um, special reasoning from the early years, you prepare them earlier to be uh, to be able to uh, cope with all the problems that is related closely with numeracy. Because it's not just specifically talking about math. You will find in our surrounding when you talk about data, when you are talking about solving problems. Uh, it's require uh, thinking skill, require reasoning skill that they can be built through special reasoning activities. So with this, with this fact or with this data that we have to uh, literature review, that we think uh, there's a specific part of the early child education that has an uh, important role here. So we name it the educators itself. So early child educators play a very important role in this sense. So they will be the person who will develop and offer really special reasoning activities to the students and then to be able to develop students' special reasoning. So that's why we're concerned to build or to support the teachers itself so they will be able to help their students to develop their special reasoning through the activities that they design. And in this project, what we're doing is we co-designing with the teachers. So we invite them, we give them a workshop, we give them um, uh, knowledge about what is special reasoning, we do activities that let them practice and understand what, what is special reasoning actually. And then we co-design with them to think what activities uh, that fit to be able to develop uh, the special reasoning, then it will be related with the numeracy. And as we know that we are talking about early childhood uh, education that is really close with the play-based activities. Later on, Ruan, we will talk more uh, that we are going to specifically talk about activities that is based on the play games or games activities, play activities. All right, so that's uh, our rationale why we we'll start having the idea of that um, of the project, why we are focusing on early childhood. And if you see in the picture, we just give one example of the studies. Actually, this one is um, the collaboration between UNESCO and Indonesian government. We got funding from New Zealand government and they work with the Early Childhood Center in Kupang, Nusa Tenggara Timur or East Nusa Tenggara. So all center in uh, East Nusa Tenggara was uh, was developed through this program. So this is one example that our government itself is actually also uh, caring about the program of developing the early childhood centers. So this is become our context where we are specifically talk about Indonesia. Um, maybe the, in the literature review, we talk a lot, we see a lot in how the early childhood education in the world are developing. And when we are focusing in Indonesia, we see also that our government is actually focuses on the policy of a holistic and integrative early childhood education. So this is coming from our government itself that they are focusing on how we give the education that is holistic and integrative. And within this, Indonesian government emphasizes the need to strengthen the development of numeracy skills of early childhood. 
So this is still matched with what is happening in the world of uh, early child education, special reasoning and literacy. How special reasoning is actually support literacy skill and how to develop a special reasoning skill can help students to advance on the literacy skill. And our government, my, my context is Indonesian government, is actually focusing on how to help improving the literacy skill of Indonesian students. So this has become the context of our uh, project uh, that we are focusing on helping the special reasoning of the students so that it can touch base later on on, the, on their university skills. All right, so now maybe with my earlier two slide explanation, you might still want to realize how this can be related. It's like special reasoning, when you are talking about space and shape, and then how is it related with numerical, something related with number, and how is actually get connected? Maybe I'm trying to make this into sense how it is related. So let's talk about special reasoning itself. So special reasoning is coming from space. So indeed, it is a part of a space and shape. As long as you can bring things into shape and space, then you are related with special reasoning. So a more formal definition I took it from uh, Batista and Lin is the ability to formulate or manipulate, uh, transform and generalize a mental image in mind. So you have all the manipulation in your mind and then you can see the relationship between the parts of the image itself. So let's say you have the image of cube in your head, in your mind, then you can work with that cube as you wish. You want to cut it, you want to open the boxes, you want to make it like whatever you want, but you do it all in your image, in your in your mind's eyes. So that is part of special reasoning. Uh, so if I can give more explicit examples, like when you do visualization, when you do a map reading and trying to look for location, you're trying to think like, oh, this is a map and where am I? Like you're trying to uh, coordinate things and seeing your position and then ordering things uh, when in the context of early childhood, you can collect which one is color, red, 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 yellow, 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 or big, 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 small, 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 circles, triangles, etc. So doing all that ordering and then um, sorting things, that's part of the quite simple activities in special reasoning. And when we are coming to numeracy, numeracy indeed is talk about number and very early times people defining numeracy. But these days, this definition evolved. We talk about broader scope about numeracy skills. So in this sense, it's the ability to understand and perform basic mathematics operations and ideas, as well as to apply mathematical knowledge and skill in the daily life. So you are able to solve many things in our daily life that is related with numbers. You can have your uh, reasoning. This is part of numeric, numerical skills. So within this too, so if you train you, uh, if you train the kids a lot with the activities in special reasoning, then you will see there is a you build their general reasoning skills. Because when you do all those activities, try to do manipulation, formulate things using uh, mind eyes. So you train them to be in structure, to keep, to build their uh, reasoning skills. And then also there is a specific space mathematics relation here that they can use uh, into the problem in, numer in numeracy. For example, when you talk about number, uh, kids, maybe they are not aware that number three actually coming before number four, or maybe number 10 is actually coming after number nine. So positioning the number is actually, you can bring it into the space concept, like number line, you know that going to the right, the number going to be bigger, and you going to the left, the number going to be smaller. Like those kind of relations is actually built to special listening activities when uh, like you know, naming like you when you train the student to say turn left, turn right, or you're in front of me, you're behind me. Like you try to do positioning, then it's also uh, build your ability in understanding numbers 
if I give you a quite simple examples. Maybe if you do a mathematical operation, if you're talking about number, have you experienced that actually you are moving number when you do addition or subtraction? Like something you put a number into space. So uh, when you be able to correlate this thing, so actually special reasoning activities without, um, let's say, not directly working with number, but we build that sense in our kids. So they build this break of school abilities. So that's, um, that's the reason or the background of this study, how special reasoning is actually closely related to numerical skill. So that's why we try to touch basic build their special reasoning. So in order, when they grow, not just in the sense of um, early childhood, but, but it's, the starting is from early childhood, then we try to build their numerical skill in the later years, where up to, uh, when they are living like us also we really closely need a uh, number of skills uh so i will stop here i can pass it to uh dr wanti to continue talking about what is play based and and the, the next slide as well what can you hear me yes yes thanks yes, yes. Uh, yeah can you all hear me okay yes Okay, thank you. So thank you for the opportunities. And just to echo um, Destina's comment earlier and Bunina's um, opening remark that it's actually a very um, great opportunity for us to work together in this um, small research project, but it's also, I think, a very, um, uh, it's very nice working uh, to build the working relationship between UIII, Deacon, and St. Benjamin. So um, I think that Sina already talked a lot about the, um, you know, the, uh, the meaning of um, spatial thinking, spatial ability and spatial reasoning and its connection to numeracy learning. So in early childhood context, we are very well aware that, you know, uh, one of the pedagogies that is very appropriate in early childhood is the play-based pedagogies because, it, you know, children, you know, are, are in the critical and formative years where they actually learn by playing. So the experiences of playing actually is a very important part of children's development. And we want to draw on that pedagogy in terms of connecting that pedagogy with learning, um, you know, numeracy skills, but developing also the spatial thinking and spatial ability. So because in terms of play, I think children do use their body movement orientation. They have to, you know, construct things. Like if you look at the pictures um, on the left-hand side, you, you know, one of the very common and famous games for children is Lego, for example, playing with building Lego block. Um, and also but in Indonesian traditional games, for example, um, you know, when children play, uh, play hide and seek or patak umpet, for instance, they actually have to use the spatial orientation skills. So um, just trying to make sure that, you know, all the experiences that children um, ex have during that early years can be connected and can be linked to um, their learning of mathematics later in their, their later schooling years. So that's why I think one of the one of the literature that we draw on in this project is, you know, um, the article by Lee that talks about, you know, toddlers as mathematicians and how the experience of learning um, in early years through play-based pedagogies actually um, are very important for, for children to develop their mathematical thinking and mathematical skills. So if we can move on to the next page. Yes, thank you. Um, so I think that's the, Dr. Destina already talked about the meaning or the definition of uh, special ability. So that involves formulating, manipulating, transforming, and generalizing as well. And Tom Laurie and um, his team um, actually unpack or talk about the three key constructs um, of special ability. So, visualization, orientation, and rotation, mental rotation. So on the right-hand side, you can see some of the example of the different type of, uh, for example, mental rotation, when we look at 
um, a picture of these three-dimensional constructions of cubes from different angles, how we, uh, you know, by mental rotation, we can actually see the similarities and differences of the shape from different angles. And there's also an example of orientation there, looking at the picture and then thinking about whether or not it's actually when you move clockwise or counterclockwise, how the, the orientation actually uh, impact the, the, uh, the view or the shape. And again, like the visualization, when we try to um, use a net or, you know, like we have a net of a cube and we try to construct a cube using just um, looking at the nets of the cube. So that is something um, like special activities that are involved in um, the, the special abilities, basically, that we need to develop. Um, all right, so I think the next slide. Thank you. So in this project, we look at uh, three research questions. I won't read the research questions, but in, in essence, I think when we design the project, we talk about uh, what are the, first of all, the design features of the task that we will, um, you know, sort of like choose to actually um, this, um, use with the early child educators to promote um, children's spatial reasoning skills in the early years. So that's the first step, um, you know, identify what are the key design features of the task that we will select that has the potential of developing uh, um, children in early years uh, setting with the early child educators role there, play, uh, play a big role there. And then we also, then the second research question, look at the design of the workshop of the professional uh, learning experience for the early childhood educators. So that's why we work together with the uh, CML Chacha team as well um, to, to make sure that, you know, the context and the policy and the best practice actually is in line with um, the, the guidelines from the CMA team. And then the third research question, look at the enablers and challenge, uh, challenges that the early child educators face in integrating and implementing the play-based uh, special reasoning activities. So we actually want to really uh, develop that agency from the early child educators because we are aware that the part, um, the different early childhood centers have different needs and also different uh, focuses. And then, you know, they have limitations, but also different strengths. So playing to their strengths and also, you know, realizing that there are challenges that um, the different early childhood centers face, but also their strengths. They have to, uh, they have different strengths and capacity to develop further. So that's, those are the three research questions that guide um, this project. So, okay, so I think as um, at the beginning, I think Prof Nina and also uh, Buddha Sina already talked about the rationale for the collaboration. As I think it's very clear when you look at the three research questions, the research aim and the, you know, the different strengths of the team that we do need to have that collaboration with CMAO Chechak team uh, with Budesina, whose PhD research actually um, focuses on spatial reasoning, uh, but also uh, with Deacon in terms of, you know, the strength of um, drawing on the track record of professional development and professional learning and uh, research in that space. So we kind of like, you know, um, work together closely and develop our strengths or rely on a, the track record of each team to come up with this project and contribute to the project. So um, I think the next um, slides is still about research design. So we started by recruiting the participants in terms of you know inviting the early child educators uh, and then posting the flyers um, to invite them to part uh, participate in the project. And then we have um, two uh, I think the first workshop, actually, the introductory workshop was conducted online, uh, where we actually introduced the idea and the focus of the research. And then the main workshop, the first workshop uh, face to face was uh, conducted at 
U triple I. Uh, we had the Sam Chachak team came. Uh, I was there as well. And um, also we were supported by Rasi and Shifa. And I think we have about 20 something, 23 or 24 early childhood educators came to join the first workshop. And then after the workshop, we then, um, you know, um, encourage basically the early childhood educators went back to their own centers and then implemented um, the design. Um, so that's for, for, I think, two to four weeks, between two to four weeks. And then we had another follow-up workshop in, I believe, in November, where um, all the early child educators came back and then shared their experiences. We had the gallery walk, we had the poster, and then we also had the focus group discussion. So they shared their ideas and share also the, the challenges and the enablers during that uh, follow-up workshop. So uh, I will hand over to the Seamel Chachap team to talk about uh, one of the, um, the activities that we did in the first workshop is to actually have the guest lecture from Seamel Chachap. So over to Pa Iwan and Bufa team, maybe. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Bufa. Uh, my name is Iwan uh, from Seamel Chachap. Uh, the last time we had a workshop for the Childhood uh, educators, and then, uh, and then uh, this is Ibu Mary, this is, this is our experts in, in policy for early childhood uh, education. And uh, last, last time we, we, we started with a uh, presentation uh, on introducing uh, mathematical concept for yeah, two young children. And I think I mean, maybe I, I, will, I will have a, a brief, a brief uh, explanation about the. About the, about the presentation. The presentation emphasizes that uh, um, why uh, teaching ch ch young children uh, uh, in math uh, is so important because uh, we start with the basic, uh, which is counting and recognizing numbers. Uh, but the best part is uh, we, we should make it fun. Uh, we use school activities uh, to show the shapes, uh, patterns, and sorting. Uh, learning should be uh, enjoyable because uh, this this uh, this activities will uh, will will build a strong foundation foundation for uh, uh, later math skills. And each child is different, so we adjust the activities based on their levels. And uh, the goal is to make um, math is a positive experience for the young children. And then uh, by doing si uh, simple and math uh, activities today. Uh, we hope we hope that we can help them to uh, to get ready for uh, advanced uh, math in, uh, in the future. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, teachers should not teach writing, reading, and uh, counting directly to the children. Uh, the teachers are encouraged to uh, to introduce numbers and letters and uh, literacy uh, in fun ways uh, to to the to the young children. So uh, I think some uh, one of the one, one of the uh, government policy in Indonesia is of a transition from an early early uh, childhood education to primary education in a fun way. Uh, so the, it can support uh, school readiness for the young children to enter the primary education. And in in, in the, the workshop, uh, we have some uh, we, we introduce. Uh, the the educators uh, must or numeracy or stasia in the in the family. Maybe who this is that can explain. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right. So this is the start of our workshop actually. We we start with the with the sense of what is the best practice as mentioned by part one and then we continue the activities with um, we put the teachers itself in the position as the students how if they are doing special reasoning activities uh in the could be inside the room uh, this is the example when they are reading a map in the surrounding of uh, triple i itself so razi designed these activities 
So we, we give them the printed uh, map and we ask them to look for a location that already designed. So they need to go there. It's kind of competition. We have several groups in there. So it's sort of like fun activities. We want the teacher experience themselves so they know exactly what it is, the feeling as a student doing the activities, position themselves. If, uh, so this is a, a one to one fact is that some teachers is also confused that uh, is the north in the map is the same in the, the north where, where we are facing it. So you know, like you try to position yourself between the map and you yourself in that location, whether you're in the building and field or whatever. But to relating those two is one of the uh, structure in a special reasoning we call it a uh, special orientation. How you are able to orient it yourself without feeling confused or get confused. And the second one, after they arrive to the location, they need to come back to the initial room and they need to be able to draw the map on their path of going back. So the fact, the map, none of them are the same actually. Uh, this is fun also and also it's interesting because, um, you know, it's, uh, this, this skill is actually not everyone has. And I think it's, it's not something that is, can't be learned. Everyone can learn, everyone can be good in this. So I'm not agreed that the boys are the one that is good reading the map. <laughs> so uh, boys or girls both are the same as long as we give them over the same opportunity to learn, right? So this is one of the activities so that the early childhood educators can sense also how they're going to build activities. Maybe the one that we give the level is somewhat a little bit um, not, not advanced as well, but maybe they need to also put it later on in the level of their student in their respective center. And this is the second activities. They are not doing it outside the game. They come inside the room, but they work with the cute blocks. So this is the ideas from special visualization when they are able to build or construct from the uh, cube, cube, uh, cuboid or cube uh, that they can construct into different types of um, shape or uh, yeah or form so this we shape it into the activities uh, that the partner give instruction and the friends try to translate that instruction if they say like uh, add another two blocks vertical on the right side or on the left side so whether they can understand the instruction well whether they can create exactly the same construction as what is ordered to them so those are one of the activities that when you're receiving the information, that's one thing. And then you start thinking how to visualize, oh, he's, what, what he said, two blocks vertical or two blocks below the, whatever the, the sentence. But that's how they start build their special visualization thinking to be able to construct as what is ordered to them. This is one of the activities, but there will be varied activities that can be made from uh, working with the cube block itself. It's normally used to build their special visualization skills. And we have one more activities. We are working with Tangram. I think everyone is familiar with Tangram, right? It's, it's quite fun. They, are, they normally have like hundreds, hundreds, to tens of different types of form. But what we are doing here is working with symmetrical shape or mirroring the, the, the shape. So one person going to build whatever they want. And then the other person say, hey, build exactly like mine, but it has to be mirror, not, not equal, because it, it's equal in the same direction. But mirror, it means it, you need to create in the opposite side with the same shape, but it's symmetrical. So the ideas of working with, um, with a mathematical concept, but also train their special thinking is in these activities, because you also construct before you're making, because you think of how to make it exactly like the other uh, shape. But while you're working on that, you might also rotate the shape, you work with each of those pieces. So there's a mental rotation, there's special visualization involved in these activities. So these are examples of activities that we, we were asked, the, we asked the teachers to do during the workshop so they can have insight on what kind of activities that I can uh, give to my students. So we give a preliminary um, samples of activities so can they, it can trick them to think of uh, other activity when we come into the session of co-designing 
um, lesson for their centers. So maybe you can try also if you have tangram or cube blocks. Uh, anyone in triple IU, I have all this material in my office. So feel free to come if you feel bored. I want to build the construction with the cube point, uh, with the cube blocks. So feel free to come. Yes, <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. Uh, so this is the the picture of when the teacher are gathered in the whole room. So for your information, when they are doing the activities and they are creating this design, we group them actually into the edge or, or the level that is quite close to. So uh, what I mean here is the participant in early childhood is actually quite varied, right? From year three, I think it's from younger, it's year two, even younger, yeah? Year two up to six. So we have experienced that one center is actually have babies, literally baby. So they can't even speak, so they train them to walk around. So, it's, so in those group, maybe they will not create something more like somewhat complicated. So we try to group them in like in Indonesia, we call it TKA, TKB, uh, maybe nursery or toddler. So we put them in that group, so uh, specific groups so they can create something uh, maybe close to their to, to their needs. So these are the picture where everyone are sitting together in that group. We are from San Jose, uh, triple IU teams and uh, associate professor Ratu Vijay also sit with them. We explore together, we co-design things. We, we are not in totally give them ideas. It's their ideas, just like uh, discuss and things of uh, the possibilities of the activities that they can create. And then after having this, then they present it. So we have a session, we call it gallery wall. So they make a poster of their activities and then they present it uh, among uh, their friends. So other group will get the benefit to get the insight of what kind of activities that their uh, the other group design. And they can also might be give feedback though we, we, we have quite a limited time at the time. So they're just here, maybe not many question and answer, but at least, with the gallery wall, they can see what's there and they can give ideas to, to be able to bring back um, their center and implement this uh, this design. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to stop there first. So this, I give the picturing about what is the workshop look like. So uh, after we have the guest lecture, we work with the teacher on understanding the concept of special reasoning try to do the activities themselves so they can feel it they can uh you know they they know how is the feeling of trying to work with special reasoning and then they decide with their team so thinking of what activities that actually can uh, make my student think specially and then the next one i give the floor to uh, the screen to go one day again so to explain uh, the result of the study see you later. Yeah, thanks, Destina. So uh, the next slide, please. So in this slide, as you can see, we um, we responded or we tried to answer the first research question about the key design features of play-based activities that we um, use with the early child educators to promote children's spatial reasoning skills. So I think Destina, Dr. Destina already walked you through the different types of activity that we did. So this table actually show you the mapping of the different uh, constructs of the spatial uh, ability of spatial constructs, the three constructs that I mentioned earlier with the topic that we covered during the workshop and the type of activities and the reasoning that we are trying to promote. So I think like just coming back to the example of Tangram, uh, Tangram puzzle, for example, that involves construction, but also understanding, uh, you know, mentally rotating the different shapes uh, to, to create a symmetrical uh, shape or a tangram. Uh, but I think also um, during that workshop, we also learned that um, the early child educators actually um, are very well aware of the importance to use of like, you know, the, the use of, uh, materials that are available in there um, locally without 
you know, buying things new. So like using recycled materials or collecting recycled materials from um, the children's house or getting them to bring the materials to do this type of activity. So we learned that um, in the next slide, um, there will be in the next few slides, actually, there will be a lot of examples in the poster that the early growth educators created when they implemented the activities that really showcase the um, the key features of the, the special reasoning, but also the use of the different uh, type of materials. So maybe we move to the next slide. So this is one example of the activities that um, the early childhood educator created for their specific centers. Um, when we look through the different posters and you know we heard the, the sharing during the follow-up workshop, we, one of the thing that we notice is the different local context that early child educators really uh, featured in, in the top of uh, the activities with their students. So uh, for example, this one example, um, the early child educators asked children to actually, you know, use the ALOP or uh, cube blocks to uh, uh, create some shapes, uh, create a, a uh, different shapes and look at different shapes from different perspectives, uh, different angles. So that is related to the, um, you know, special orientation and uh, be able to see the different directions. But also there are activities of reading maps. I think, uh, yeah, I think re reading maps and understanding different patterns. Um, the uh, early child educators also refer to the guest lecture, for example, when they learn about the concept of cardinality and one-to-one -one correspondence, and they implement that when um, they they design the uh, activities with the children in the center. So the next uh, slide will show you a different example. Again, I think using the local context, but also the recycled materials. Um, for example, I think one I I, I still remember uh, the early childhood educator talk about you know getting the children to bring uh, recycled bottle cups and um, straws, buttons to to, to um, make use of those recycled materials for the play-based activities. Um, so in this example, they are creating toys from the bottle cups and then using straws and different materials to get children to be creative as well in, in you know, in, in um, designing and constructing uh, materials to play and the next few examples I think uh, perhaps yeah these examples actually highlighted um, the context of I think Majidil or uh, the, the mushola or prayer um, constructing cube uh, using again cube blocks to construct a uh, mushola and then they talk about the um, drawing the landmark and then you know uh, using different materials to construct shapes and also that involves counting activities. There is also another example in the poster where they talk about the awareness, not this uh, particular one. This one is uh, actually using the games, traditional games like uh, Chongkla. And also the, uh, I think uh, the other traditional games where they kind of like work on the puzzle or uh, create a maze, um, I think in the other example. Um, also, I think there was another group that talk about um, paduli bachana, so being aware of the uh, activities of, uh, you know, surrounding uh, about the, what is it, the, like when earthquake came, the children need to be actually uh, be aware and very alert, and then they know how to evacuate and the activities to actually, uh, you know, orient themselves to do the evacuation. So that's also um, related to special orientation and understanding direction and maps and things like that. So I think um, maybe we can skip over and then the last, the next slide maybe, I think the next slide, yeah. So this one, the the, the outcomes from the survey actually, the, from the survey from the participants, the result from the survey uh, that talks about the importance of the professional learning program for the early child educators. So in the form of the workshop that we conducted at UIIII, actually uh, the participants 
commented that offer a good foundation for special ability and special thinking. Uh, actually, the early child educators already conducted a lot of special reasoning and ac activities through games and through play-based pedagogies. But I think the, the sense of awareness of the language and terminology that we introduce um, during the workshop is something that probably helped um, the early childhood educators to um, connect the activities that they have already conducted in the past with the concept yeah. of special reasoning. Yeah. So, and then the last thought point is about the importance of exposure to the rich uh, play-based activities um, to allow themselves to design and adapt the activities to suit the needs of the early childhood um, children in the different centers. So I will hand over to um, the Siamo Chechak team who will talk about the answers to their third research question, I think. Thank you very much, everyone. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity. I'm very honored to be part of this team. So, and um, at this slide, we are talking about the 12 results. All the way in the, we are going to talk about the enablers and also challenges that only talk to educators face in integrating and implementing the use of special reasoning activities in the own child child centers. So, it's about the educators reflecting what is the opportunities and also the challenges that they have uh, when they try to implement the, the numeric um, learning in the classrooms. So in these slides, we see that the enablers is the, the recognizing one. So uh, the educators planning beforehand the um, learning experience for the uh, students and they have the opportunities to develop what kind of learning experience that the students are going to have in classroom activities. This is also um, aligned with the Indonesian policy, which is curriculum Merdeka, uh, and it's enabled to uh, have the teachers or educators have the creativity to like develop uh, what kind of learning experiences that they are going to give to, to the students and also um, acknowledging the children's characteristics or development and what kind of um, way, uh, what kind of um, themes or topics that they're going to deliver in classroom activities. And uh, the second one is the appropriate activities or games. This is also alongside with the curriculum of the and also pedagogy, which is a play based learning. So we know that early childhood education. Education is really back on ch children's centers, which is really acknowledging that uh, they are learning by uh, first hand experience. So I think this very activities could be very diverse. And also, in these activities, we could uh, find various activities here we have to deliver the numeracy in the classrooms. And also, integration of lessons with students' daily activities. Uh, we see that in the gallery work, there's a lot of uh, daily activities that they're learning about the democracy uh, and the classroom as well. So, resource and facilities. So, um, actually, this is maybe also a challenge as well for the resources and facilities because in the in practice, um, some of the teachers say that uh, they don't have any like learning materials to teach the numeracy at the schools. However, uh, actually, while uh, we are learning with the kids, we can use whatever that we found in the classroom activities. So uh, actually, there's the resources and facilities could be like uh, not very much of a challenges for the teachers because teachers can also like a bit creative with the learning activities and also the availability of the learning medias because like uh, teachers uh, should be explore what kind of resources and learning materials that they have in the, the surrounding. So we see that the creativities of the educators during the workshops and they are very much understanding what kind of learning medias and that can be used in uh, the learning activities. 
And maybe what you want to explain about the challenges? And some some of the challenges are uh, it's, it's quite uh, because some sometimes the the the, the, the main idea about uh, special is 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 new new idea for for the, for the educators. That's why they uh, they try they try their best to to comprehend the, the concept. But actually they they already you know they, they already do it in 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 the, in the daily teaching. So some uh, some of the challenges are uh, the special activities uh, might be uh, delayed before our last uh, session because we because when we have we have the we have the we have the activities in in Stasia, so they can they, they need to postpone the other activities in the class and the and then the rigid and complex cooperation uh, front uh, and then so uh, this is uh, this is also challenges for for the teacher but. Uh, I think this is they, they can overcome this uh, this obstacle because this this one uh, when they are already uh, understand what what what's what's the specialist what what what's, what's the uh, what's what's the to to uh, what, what material to, to, to give the children so they 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 already uh, created them with uh, uh, associated with, with the, the daily teaching so uh, and then uh, time and budget constraint. Uh, this one is also <laughs> this one of uh, the, the, the the biggest challenge in in in, in center in the the ESP center and then uh, the various students ability. So, uh, like I explained uh, um, earlier, that children have to have to think different uh, different level in in their understanding uh, in the in the concept about uh, about that. So we need to uh, we need to. I think uh, very the very the, the method, the media for, for the children. And then less understanding uh, of special concept. But this is the, what, what we what we what we explain before that. We we try to uh, uh, make uh, the, the the understanding more simple, more uh, more more relatable to the to the teacher. So they, they can they can implement it in the daily uh, teaching. Thank you. Yeah, and I will leave that with the last much finding of special content, specifically um, very evident in our classroom workshop at the moment because like there's a lot of technical terms that we are using classroom activities. So the teacher sometimes like, apa bu special reasoning? Gitu? What is a special reasoning? What is like? What is it? What kind of uh, monster is it? So uh, sometimes when we talk about the math memorization is like we are like, like avoiding all the things but actually when we, we define it in approach a special way they understand it very well so i will leave that this kind of revision development that in over the completed by the destiny and things could be one of the opportunities to having that um, refreshment for the teachers to have the uh, upgrading and knowledge of oh the uh, the kind of activities that we are implementing in my classrooms is actually supporting numeration skills. All these kind of activities that I teach to the children is actually supporting their special uh, skills. So I think this kind of um, experience for the teacher is very important. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Fatim and Ivan. So these are our last slide, uh, the references, and thank you. I think the speaker back to the moderator, to the channel. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting topic and explanation. In my point of view, since I'm not an explanation, <laughs> so many issues come up during the workshop session. So I highlighted some instead of gender equity, teachers' empathy, literacy, so many. <laughs> and another beautiful thing in this research, I think, because it is highlighting the role of early childhood educators. I can remember that Jeremy Sasek has been conducted at Tanger. Uh, I, I was the one of the audience at the time. It also highlighting about the uh, early childhood educator well-being. Yeah. And showing that working with early childhood educator is such a huge concern for us, indeed. Uh, it's kind of shifting at a time. Thank you so much. Now it is time to invite the audience participation. Uh, if you have questions, please raise your hand and identify yourself.
Yes, we have our student. And I think it's your colleague, right? Haragira from South Brunei University. Uh, can you someone? Oh, yeah, Masukian. Um, yeah, for our guests from South Brunei University. Yes. Okay, hello. Um, I'm Dita Puti Saraswati. I'm actually from Universitas Indra Prasta Megayari, Jakarta now. Um, well, I'd like to ask questions about, you know, the language that you use, uh, the teachers use when they design play-based special reasoning activities, right? Because when we're uh, introducing special reasoning, there are certain languages that, you know, the teachers should use and introduce to the students, which are very specific, right? Specific for special reasoning. Now, when designing, when the, designing the play-based activities, do teachers put into consideration, for example, uh, how they choose words uh, and how they ask questions or how they give instructions in order for students to understand these special uh, special terms? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Iputi. Uh, Iputi is my uh, good friend. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, I will start with me uh, trying to answer a little on uh, one thing Samuel also can add up. Um, there is a very good question about languages and also um, the word used by the teacher and how we assure that uh, actually it is implemented and is able to help a student. Uh, reasoning especially. So I will answer the first question. Maybe when we're talking about languages, it's I agree with Puputi that it's it's one of the important things in uh, special reasoning. So it's called one of the special tools actually. So when we're talking about special reasoning, there are certain tools that is used. We have what it calls special language. We have also a uh, gesture and we also have what it called representation. Representation can be a concrete material, can be a graphical, uh, through the drawing or the, uh, you see we have uh, those cube blocks and we have hangram, et cetera. And languages, actually, when we are in, uh, looking at the poster and activities that they are designing, indeed, they are using that special languages. In a special uh, world, we call it, uh, we call different types of uh, languages. If there is a language that uh, indicate direction or uh, orientation. So that's why they learn about kanan, kiri, left, right, uh, above, below, anything that is related with uh, space actually and positioning themselves. But also languages that shows uh, the characteristic of properties. Uh, you can say something is actually taller than the other or smaller or bigger or maybe you can say um, Direction, no, direction is the other one, the first example. The second is the properties, something that is maybe smooth, like this uh, surface of the desk, something the other one is grumpy. So those are that expressing the special um, tools or the special tools that is using language. But we are not uh, explicitly saying, a student, you are learning special reasoning. So it's not like that, but we build it from activities and the language that we use is actually identify uh, those characteristics, either it's talking about positioning, direction, or about the characteristic of something. Um, and then the second question, and I think this is a good question, and can be the follow-up study of this project? Because what we are doing is most, maybe we can say it's, uh, sort of close to uh, community services where we are um, together with the teacher accommodating or support them in designing their studies but we are not doing a very detailed observation to schools so it's it's not like a quite experimental based study we are more into like uh, community based working together design uh, develop the program so if you're asking us whether they are really uh, happening in the class, maybe we don't know. But from the fact of all the the poster that they send or the videos and activities, we see there is a special reasoning going on. 
but whether um, it's in detail, we have uh, we don't have the as detail as that at the moment. Maybe at, for next, we can do another research that we can focus on certain thing and look closely the process how this built inside the classroom. Uh, I think that's from me. Any addition from other uh, members of the team? What, you want to add yeah, I think I remember like during the workshop, the teachers uh, or the educators did talk about, um, you know, the fact that they probably have done like the activities in the centers, like the play base and the, uh, the spatial uh, activities like orientation and like, you know, uh, mapping and maze activities, like they've done that a lot, but I think connecting it to the uh, the spatial reasoning language is something that are quite relatively new for for the early child educators. So that's something that uh, they have to learn, I think, during the workshop. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, this part is interesting because uh, uh, from the beginning of the workshop, uh, we tried to to make uh, to, to make the the concept or the the topic uh, uh, really really down to words because uh, we, we 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 try to explain it uh, so uh, because we were talking to the early child educators uh, th there are so many so many issues in the early child education but we try to to make it down to words so we we encourage them to. Uh, I'm guessing to uh, to find to, uh, to find the to, uh, to explore uh, the daily activities related to the topics. So and surprisingly and surprisingly, uh, they came up with the, with with, uh, with many and remarkable uh, ideas uh, of how how to teach them, to, uh, how to, to bring this this topic to the children, to young, to young children. I mean, to get to it. thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, IPDSP 19 for giving a very insightful presentation about the special uh, reasoning. Well, looking on the slides, I'm actually like finding myself because I also write the proposals about this one as well. Ibu. Like, uh, because I have to submit it last night. Like it reminds me again about uh, whatever the things years. Uh, the question is, um, I wonder about the background of the teachers actually. Um, it, it's only mentions that they have less uh, special ability understanding, but uh, in what extent they are actually having a very less uh, special ability understanding. And I just like found out that uh, in uh, your presentations, some of the teachers might, might have like done the activities based on special ability, but not realizing that this kind is actually having a basis of special ability. Or is there any other teachers like do not do any of special based uh, learning activities and knowing that this is just their first time actually uh, knowing that this kinds of activity should be conducted in the early childhood. That's my first question. And the second question is, uh, because the challenge is, one of the challenges is mentioning about the special activities might delay the other activities. I wonder that because what I, I understand that all the activities in the or most activities that is being conducted in the early childhood learning is actually based on the special activities. But why the challenge is the special learning activities is hindered or uh, delayed the other activities to be conducted in the early childhood education. Is it because it's not, uh, there is no mapping between the special activities with the current activities or what? Thank you. Right. Uh, I think 
thank you, Faradira, for the question. I will start from the second question first. Uh, it's it's very interesting question actually. Why uh, the activities become the things that hinder the process of the learning itself? So maybe uh, maybe later it can be uh, people from uh, our team from CMSSF can also be in this one. Uh, if you are aware, actually in Indonesian curriculum itself, special reasoning is not explicitly mentioned. So if you are thinking that our teachers know in advance what is special reasoning, it may be uh, we hope too much. If, if, you go, if we come to uh, another context like Australia, Canada, America, uh, they, they specifically mention, if later on maybe Buwati can also add up, that in Australia, in a numeric, numeracy skill, itself it's explicitly mentioned special reasoning skill is needed there and i think in ontario curriculum as well but in our content context um, teachers are has in our curriculum itself is not explicitly mentioned even though in the context of mathematics maybe it's already there because geometry by nature is special um context so what happened in the field actually we we actually give them something new and intervene their normal classroom process. So the activity that they design, they might already have their own uh, curriculum that they, they already plan in uh, along, along the semester. And when this activity comes, it might be somewhat, uh, maybe they say uh, in a hard way, we say disturb uh, what happened they already designed design so that's why they say it's hinder but in the future and we can accommodate this and uh, our education system know how significant the importance of special reasoning and am able to embed or accommodate accommodate it in our curriculum then by design from the very beginning it's already there in the activities and no longer become things that hinder the process of learning so we started from like uh, below, like class, of course, the giving activities. But uh, if more people are see the awareness of this, maybe uh, our policy will start thinking how significant it is related with the numeracy skills. And then the first question is about teacher background. Um, yeah, related with that again, then our teacher maybe they have no idea what is special reasoning, and we are not specifically trained them in this in this uh, project. So this project is quite loose type. So we really just, uh, hey, do you interested to study or not study? Do you interested to learn about special reasoning? Let's work with us. Something that's very relaxed. So we we have no specific assignment or things like that. Like if you are happy to do, do it. If you want, do it. Just those things. So we don't have a specific standard or preparing the teacher with their background. So that's why when on the uh, implementation itself, certain things like, oh, I did this, oh, this is special reasoning, and maybe some other things like they have no idea at all. So we have quite very uh, varied types of participants. Uh, maybe other one to add. Uh, thank you. Uh, in in, uh, in curriculum Merdeka, in, in, in curriculum yang dari awal Merdeka belajar uh, bermain, uh, Merdeka bermain in, in Indonesia, freedom to, uh, to play. Uh, I think I think we get the uh, uh, the government get the, the the center or the teacher to to uh, explore uh, widely about uh, the teach, the the teaching the learning. Uh, so. Uh, uh, they, they, they didn't have to do any any uh, any any written or 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 and just just uh, just brief guidelines for for the teacher to uh, to do the 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 the, the learning uh, or the teaching uh, the, the teaching process. So uh, I think uh, the the some of some of the some of the uh, the teachers are uh, maybe they are quiet uh, or reluctant uh, or private or private uh, difficult to to adjust with the with the, the new curriculum. So so sometimes they 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 already uh, they already get the design and design the the learning but. Uh, but uh, but in, in in the end, uh, sometimes that 
uh, this could be quite some of issue, uh, an issue in in uh, uh, education educators the, about about the training, about the competency, about the I think <laughs> the most the most about it about about the salary. This is this is this is uh, a quite challenging for for, for the for the educators. So uh, uh, maybe we uh, we we just think that they are they just are a little domain already. Just just how to connect this. Uh, this topic, this uh, special, uh, uh, special, uh, special, special, and uh, uh, to the daily practice. Because we, 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 uh, I remember the, the first, uh, the, the first uh, workshop. Some of them are adapted, and some of them, uh, how to do it? How, uh, what, what, what can I do with, 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 uh, with uh, spatial, uh, spatial, uh, in, in, in daily, in daily. Teaching, so I, I give them a, 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 just, I, a, just, I, I just I just I to say how about the uh, scattered your heart? How about uh, the drawing map? How about the concept of life and life? That 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 that's just simple. We, 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 we just don't don't think so much. Just don't think uh, too complex uh, about 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 this uh, topics. We just make it simple and then oh yeah, I come up with the idea. So. How to find uh, the nearest uh, most from the from the from the center? Uh, we, we can have have the uh, scavenger hub, but they already did it. They already done it in in, in their design uh, with the new design. So uh, we we try. There, there is spatial. There is commerciality. There, there is so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pak, akhirnya ternyata begitu saja ya gitu ternyata. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's, 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 oh. Itu sudah kami lakukan tiap harinya. They were already, they already uh, done it in their day uh, day 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 from Desina and Pak Iwan already captured that. I, I was just answering the question in the chat from the online participants. But if there are any further questions, then maybe uh, feel free to ask more questions, I think. So if Desina, can you choose one of the questions from the chat box? This one, Rina. Based on the tricky construct of special ability, how do we introduce it or then to play? Do we start from activities of spatial visualization first and until the ability is mature or integrated, then we continue constructing spatial orientation to play or we can store in any key or have them all in a play? Do you want me to start or you want to start first? Uh, I already responded in the chat, but if you want to add something. So I th already. Yeah, I said that um, okay, um, okay. ideally, right. yeah, ideally. Okay. I think, yes. Okay, so because one already answered there, uh, yeah, I'll just add a little bit. So it, it doesn't have any specific structure or it has to be battery. Even if you read uh, on the literature, there are numbers of constructs. Uh, I remember when I did my PhD, I tried to collect all the ideas of a spatial construct and it's, it's more than um, nine or ten, but they are actually uh, quite close to each other. So we come uh, like from Tom Lorry uh, article, it says that three construct, but you don't have to always have those three construct. It doesn't have any any specific structure as we want you already mentioned. So any, if you want to just use one of it, that's also okay. Uh, if you want to use all of them, it's also okay. All right, due to time constraints, so um, I would like to thank to Ibu Wati, Ibu Destina, and Siala Sisset for sharing us an interesting topic. I believe all the audience are enlightened at least 
have a glimpse of idea how to conduct research, including collaborative research. So I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Charina Hanu, one of the lecturers of Faculty of Education. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for all the audience to joining this today lunch talk. We will see you next month with a different speaker and topic. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bu Charina, and thank you, everyone.